Hello and welcome to Developing Relationships. We're going to take you to behind the scenes of incorporating affordable housing in new developments. If we've never met before, I'm Nama Blonder. I'm an architect and urban planner with Smart Density and a board member of Kehila. Kehila is a deeply affordable housing provider for individual and families, low income individuals and families. And I encourage you to check out their website to learn more about the important work they, that they do. I'm joined here today by my good friend, uh, the co-founder of the Yorkville team, sales representative Lirad Kligman, and is my fellow board member of Kehila. The program today has three main parts. The first one, we are joined today by Gregory Enriquez from Vancouver, and it's 9 a.m. over there, so good morning, Gregory, uh, and where we have a presentation of the project. The second part, we're going to have a conversation between West Bank, the developer, and Kehila Residential Program, the affordable housing provider, and where we learn about the mechanism and the process of affordable housing in new developments. And the last part will be a virtual tour of the under construction site, the Mervish Village, which is super cool. I've been there. You really don't want to miss that part. So over to you, Lirad, for land acknowledgement, thanking our sponsors, and introducing Gregory Enriquez. Great. Thank you, Nama. It's a pleasure to be here today. All right. So since this project has relevance to both Ontario and uh, British Columbia, we're going to read land acknowledgements for both. So within Ontario, Kahila wishes to acknowledge this land on which we live has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Senecas, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are very grateful to have the opportunity to work and live on this land. Now, over to the West Coast, British Columbia, we respectfully acknowledge the unceded traditional territories on which Henriquez Partners is located and impacts, which include the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, uh, excuse my pronunciation, and the Musqueam Nations. Um, we are very lucky to have amazing sponsors tonight uh, at this event. Our lead industry sponsor is Alice Dawn, so thank you very much. We have uh, the next tier of industry sponsors, including Pro Soberman, Enriquez Partners Architects, Montgomery System Architects, and Nemets and & Associates. And we're also joined by HGC Engineering as our supporting sponsor. Uh, so as a next step, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Gregory Henriquez himself. Uh, Gregory is the managing principal of Henriquez Partners Architects and a leader amongst a generation of architects who are reintegrating ethics and activism into the discipline. His work is founded on the belief that meaningful architecture must be poetic expression of social justice. Henriquez Partners Architects are the lead architects of Mervish Village. So now over to you, Gregory. Thank you, Gregory, for that thoughtful presentation. All right, so now on to our panel discussion portion of the morning. So it's my pleasure to introduce both Lisa Lipowitz, um, and Tyson uh, Parker. Um, so Lisa is Kahila's executive director. She's responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of Kahila. She's been an integral part of Kahila since 1988 uh, and is a very valued part of the team. So thank you for joining us, Lisa. Uh, and then we're on to Tyson. So Tyson is West Bank's vice president of experiential design. Tyson's deeply involved in creating live and virtual experiences across West Bank's projects. Uh, establishing multi-tiered entertainment strategies and embracing all avenues of the arts, culture, music, food, and retail. That's what I do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. I got it. <laughs> okay. Now to the part that everyone wants to know. Tyson, first question is to you. Sure. What makes a, you know, an organization like Kehila, a nonprofit, what does it make it attractive to you know, partner with a developer incorporating affordable housing units into your project? Good question. Um, listen, uh, as a developer, uh, I think one of our missions is to get as close to zeitgeist and community as we possibly can. And uh, we can't think of uh, a, a better position to be aligning ourselves with community organi organizations such as Kahila. Um, we know that the heartbeat of any community is through these groups. And it's really advantageous for us um, as a company who is invested really at the end of the day in human beings uh, in trying to make the world a better place through design like Gregory has just gone through with us now and, um, and working with groups like yours uh, and others. It, it, it makes us a little more fluid. It allows us to you know, get inside of the, 
you know, the, the, the mind of the, the um, residents of community and, and allow us to grow our business and listen to that community to make it a more of a living, breathing organism. Um, as per my uh, descriptor, uh, you know, our company is, is trying to not just leave a development after it's been completed, we're trying to stay with it and have it grow through art, through community, and working with, with groups such as this will allow us to you know, have a better footprint inside to what is exactly going on. Because Toronto, for all of its greatness, one of the, the most beautiful things is its diversity. West Bank is a very inclusive company. We want to be attached to like-minded people. Bloor and Bathurst is different than you know, uh, Bloor and Young or Queen and Spadina. Uh, and working with the local groups makes it uh, far more um, easier for us to push a narrative along. Lisa, same, same question from your perspective. So w when we were, look for developers to work with, we look for people who are like-minded like us, who are community-oriented, and who are, building a, who are actually building a community, not just four walls. H housing is more than just four walls. It's, it's, it's the heart of the home. And um, we also look for partners that check all of our boxes. And um, West Bank certainly did that. That's great to hear. Yeah, we um, feel the very same. So, OK, so we are missing a part of the triangle, which is the city. And, you know, as I'm, I'm really curious to, to hear how, if you can, you know, share with the audience, how is it working with the city, with the municipal approval process? Is there a formula? How, you know, how is that incorporated into your approval process, your design process? Take us to, to behind the scenes of that aspect. Um, well, listen, I, I, I think on the design side of things, um, all four walls are the same, that we are not going to make our um, market units different from our affordable units. And I think that's important to you as well. It's very important to and, us and our clients. Yeah, and uh, I, I think it would be unfair of, of any developer or, or organization to make one different from the other. So we started there uh, and working with city, the city of Toronto, and you know, trying to you know, build out a housing crisis answer, which we are in, we all know that, um, and, and what we're doing is a start. We need to do more and will with other developments. Um, but the city and the province have been great partners. Um, uh, CMHC is a, is a great partner that will define at the top of the year what you know, affordability actually looks like, uh, and, and, and all of that science will be attached to uh, how we proceed. Um, but, you know, I, I, I want to hang on the design piece because, you know, we'd like to think that all things are created equal and everyone deserves a, the same chance. And that was important to us, Gregory, uh, as I'm sure he's just said in his speech, to, um, you know, give, uh, uh, give Mervish Village an identity that is sustainable uh, and going to have a, a life throughout the whole of the longevity of this project. Lisa, anything you would like to add? I would just like to add that um, I agree with, with Tyson. Um, it's important for a nonprofit, though, I think, to be partners with the developer. Kihila wrote a letter to CMHC back in 2017 endorsing this project. So we've been, we've been in business with, with West Bank for a very long time. And I think it's important for a developer, you, you may or may not agree with me, to have the, the nonprofits lined up to give, to give the, the affordability piece credibility. I'd also want to comment on the CMHC um, affordable rents. While rents are affordable in the marketplace, they are not affordable to our vulnerable population. And that's one of the things that, that we do at Kahila. We have a very robust rental assistance program serving 300 people from youth leaving foster care system to Holocaust survivors to everybody in between. So while Burbage Village will be affordable. They won't be affordable to our clients, and we will be attaching rental assistance to our units as well. That's another way that a nonprofit can help uh, the clients succeed and the developers succeed. Very good point. Thank you. You know, if you th if I may, sorry. It, you know, the Mervish family really helped define what Toronto mm -hmm. is, and. You know, as a, a, a Jewish American immigrant in, coming into Toronto, you know, Ed and, and, and the whole of the family built a community that was inclusive. Uh, and that is really, really important to, to, to West Bank, but 
the success of Mervish will come from what has been built by the Mervish family. Um, it will, sure, we're going to program this, and it's going to, you know, uh, I hate saying this, but sing. It will read, and you know, we're going to put all that soft tissue into a development that we're very, very proud of. But without the people uh, and the inclusiveness of those people. Um, you know, it's, it's just another development and, you know, we're just feeding off of what the Mervish family helped build and helped define Toronto as. That's fantastic. Carrying that legacy forward. That's right. Yeah. So, so looking to the future, you know, it's really innovative how there is affordable housing units integrated well within the project. Um, so take us through some of the nitty gritty of that. Um, how does an affordable housing agency run affordable housing within a greater housing complex? Oh. Is that mine or yours? I think it's ours. But <laughs> from our part, part, we make sure to set the clients up for success. That's really the most important thing that, uh, that, I, that I think an agency can do. We're not a service provider, we're a housing agency. And we have partnerships with social service agencies so that we make sure that we have uh, a support system in place for clients and we, we want to really ensure their success. Yeah, and, and likewise, and I can say that you know, affordable housing is, is a, uh, a, a, a daily vernacular for West Bank, and it, is, uh, it, it runs across our, our development teams, our construction teams, our uh, project management teams, our marketing teams, our communication teams. So it is part of everyday life for us. So, you know, we're living in a housing crisis that we're building in. So it would be really foolish of us to not you know, be all hands on deck at every corner of our company. You know, your question is, you know, uh, building a village inside of a village. And for us, it, 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 it starts internally. And it starts with our leader, Ian Gillespie. And he has distilled that into every corner of our offices, both in Vancouver and in Toronto. You know, the findings from Vancouver have, you know, I don't know that they apply specifically to Toronto, but there is you know, I think we're, we're beneficial of the great job that BC is doing in the affordable housing market, and we're learning from those, mm -hmm. uh, working with CMHC, working with city, working with province, working with you, uh, and, and talking about it as a company in a very uh, wholesome way. So it's not left out of any conversation, if that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. A village inside of a village. I'm going to say village a lot. <laughs> I, I think that's, uh, that's one of the themes. And it one, takes a village. It does take a village. And one of the things I really like about this, the configuration is the affordable units are not clustered. They're in different buildings on different floors. So people don't feel like they're identified. They, people don't feel stigmatized. Nobody knows where the affordable, our, our units are not all together, which I really love. Yeah, that's right. They're, they are scattered throughout our property, our developments. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that sort of speaks to you know, all things being created equal, it was important to us that we did not want to, you know, put one over here and, and something over there. Uh, it would be go against the ethos of who we are. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so on that note, what would you say to other developers who are concerned about uh, the fear or stigma that uh, buyers or tenants would have being associated with affordable housing units? Um, and, and how do we turn that on its head and encourage more affordable housing to be built? Well, listen, uh, I can only speak on behalf of West Bank, um, but I would encourage other developers to jump in with both feet, that life is long, uh, that communities are uh, both uh, r r rich in, in areas and, 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 and less affordable in, in, in others. And you know, when I mean rich, I mean culturally, I mean, you know, all the socio-economical backgrounds that make cities amazing. Um, you know, I would suggest that developers work with the city as best they can, uh, invest mm -hmm. in local community groups uh, to, to better understand what is happening with the actual ebb and flow of street corners. Uh, Toronto is blessed to have some pretty powerful street corners that, um, that are populated by human beings of all walks of life. So uh, I don't think there's a stigma. I don't think that there should be fear in the marketplace. There isn't for West Bank. We're proving it with Mervish Village. Um, we can do more. We will do more. Uh, but, you know, listen, you know, communities are this, this buoy of bays of, um, of, of human existence. And it's important to include everyone inside of that for it to really grow and, and to blossom. And, you know, where I come from, you know, the inclusion of everyone is, is what makes 
soil rich. And, uh, you know, I, I think developers should not be afraid. I think they should take their own personal risk and invest in human beings like we are. Beautiful. I think developers should use West Bank as an example <laughs> and, and, and jump in with both feet. You know, but it's important to know that every developer has a different business model. Absolutely. Every neighborhood is different. You know, when we build, we invest in the actual street corner. We invest in, you know, the Bathurst Street Station and, and the TCC and, and finding learnings from that and how density moves around uh, and, and how it gets from A to B. That played a very significant role in the way we developed Mervish. Um, I think, uh, you know, Toronto is blessed to have a, a great mayor who's investing in, 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 in social communities and affordable housing. And the big one that's going to, pardon my language, piss a lot of people off, and, and that is getting people from A to B. Uh, Mervish is blessed to have a, a station that is <laughs> uh, both a streetcar and a subway, um, you know, and we weren't you know, ignorant to that fact. And, and that allowed us to better understand the people who actually live there. So developers should do likewise and invest in humans. It's great. Okay. So we call this event developing relationships. Uh, and, and I think it just speaks to the wonderful relationship that's blossomed between Kahila and with West Bank. So um, any, any sort of uh, key insights or learnings that you got from this experience that you'd like to share with other developers? Well, I think that developers and, and agencies alike should be flexible, be willing to work together, respect each other's vision, and try to work, work for the client. I think if, we, if you do that, you, you can't help but be successful. Yeah, I'd go along with that. You know, and, and using you know, analytics and science to uh, understand density better, I think, is, is a, 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 a way forward. Um, you know, working with groups and really understanding that zeitgeist and, and, and what, if you're into that, if you believe in zeitgeist, and uh, I, I do, I've said it twice, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think, you know, patience and understanding and, you know, working with really credible, uh, intelligent and committed and sustainable groups uh, like Kahila is, is, is paramount, absolutely paramount. I think you answered that, that question perfectly. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. All right. So uh, we have. We some have. Yeah, I'm, from I'm monitoring the the question. Thank you for for asking those questions. So we had a question about services, and I think it. I, I don't know what they meant with that question exactly, but I think it, it's a, actually a very good opportunity for us, for you, Tyson, to tell us more about the programming and how you know these things are envisioned as part of the services this new development is going to offer. And may, maybe same question for you and services and affordable housing. How is the day to day is going to work? You mentioned the units are staggered, so it means that you know in maintenance. It, you, it, it makes things more complex for you, for you, right, as an organization. So let's take that services comp component and... I see. So uh, yeah. the question is the amenities that Mervish will have yeah. on offer. That's a good question. Um, listen, we want people to live and breathe at Mervish. That's what the Mervish family uh, built. We want to sustain that. Um, uh, we have... Um, you know, a desire to uh, enrich people's lives. So when we program, we have, let's take um, part of the, the development uh, is a continuation of Honest Ed's Alley, where there will be, um, you know, just shy of, of 20 micro retail spaces that are all local, that are all new businesses that we want to help scale. So if you had a, a soap company and you were trying to grow your business, you're having a tough time getting it off the ground, you could work with us on a shorter term lease to help you get yourself off the ground and scale it. Well, what we want to do is, is have those businesses be you know, akin to what we have also going on. There is a university called Gus that is going to be in there. Um, you know, there is amazing people like the, um, uh, the Blackhurst Cultural Center, uh, Ita from another book list who's been a staple of that street corner in Mervish Village for a very, very long time, is going to help us program more diversity and inclusion. We have uh, a heritage lane uh, that is all um, heritage housing. Uh, I'm going to get the number wrong, but it's called 18 heritage spaces that have been preserved uh, and restored. 
Uh, it's actually the most exciting thing that I'm looking forward to, uh, where again, local businesses will be welcome to grow their business, maybe coming out of the alley into uh, the, the heritage lane. We will have a West Bank built uh, city run uh, urban park um, with a Frank Stella mural that is attached to it. Frank Stella is an American artist, but really cut his teeth here, um, not unlike Margaret Atwood. More on that in the coming days or months. That was a seed, um, you know, and then we have the hub and the heartbeat of what Mervish Village will be, which is the kitchen, which will be essentially a, a food hall that is uh, enriched by local fairs and fairs from out the whole of the world. If you can imagine, one of my favorite places on the planet is um, Borough Market in London, which is kind of run by artists and bohemians and farmers and they all congregate into central london which we can all agree is one of the greatest places on the planet um uh and it, it is it, it is a uh, sort of a melting pot of, of 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 food and creative arts that it's all uh there for the local residents and the local providers to grow their businesses so mervish will have all of that we will have a bike chair we will have a world-class gym um, in, in, in the coming year or so, there will be an ent entertainment facility that we're building out. Um, our, uh, our, our development will open probably in the second quarter of 2023 uh, and, and have some staggered openings throughout the course of, of 2023 and fully operational hopefully by the end of next year. So. I hope that answers the amenity question. Yeah, I we actually, Lisa, we're getting a lot of like, you know, detailed, nitty gritty questions on the for like how you run the affordability, accessibility for how long it's going to be affordable. So feel free to to speak to some of the facts so, as well. Well, can you imagine a community that Tyson just mentioned and affordability as well? Yeah. What a gift this is to our city. It really is a gift to the city and. Um, we, have, we are entering into a, a contract with West Bank. I don't remember for how many years it is to, for the affordable units. I believe it's 25 years, their CMHC con right, contract. Know. So the, the, and, and, and the faith I have in West Bank is they'll, they'll probably extend it long after I've retired as the <laughs> executive director. But um, it's just going to be a great community for our clients. I mean, can you imagine a bike share, a gym, a university, a kitchen? A, Micro retail you, and and the heritage housing and the, the Frank Stella mural is just spectacular. If you drive by and you peek it through Markham Street, you can see it, Markham yeah. Lane. So all this and affordability too. That's why we are so delighted to be part of this project. We, I, it's really it's invigorated our agency. Um, there's been a lot of interest in it. The only downside is we only have 12 units, but it's great. You know, and I, I forgot to mention that. You know, food and, and, of course, music will play a very substantial role in, in the heart and yeah. the cultural heartbeat of, of, of Mervish Village. And that corner, which you described, that, that was that corner 50 years ago. Yeah. As well. I want to finish, to, before we are moving to the virtual uh, tour uh, live uh, with Brenda, one last question. Can you name one challenge that you have faced in the, you know, incorporating the affordable housing or, and how you overcame it, something that, you know, could, uh, the audience could, could learn from. The one challenge, how you overcome it. I think, uh, I, I said it earlier that, you know, no market is the same as the next. So I think a little bit of continuity in, in definition around uh, policy could go a long way. Um, you know, uh, that's not to say that our city and our province isn't doing what it, it, it can, but we talked about, you know, the great work that the, the province of British Columbia has, has done. Uh, we as a company are, are taking those learnings and, and, and trying to grow from it. I think that um, Ontario could do likewise with a little more speed and, and um, uh, in, in pace, I think, just to, to create a, a very visible and very transparent uh, affordable housing model that, you know, is applied to not just Mervish Village, but, but others. We are in a desperate housing crisis. You know, it breaks my heart every single day. Mm -hmm. And I think that the more times people have these conversations, the more people won't be afraid to run on it in, you know, municipalities. Um, you know, uh, I just think a little more continuity in, in the policy. 
raising the bar, yes. Yeah, so, our right. challenges in the past have been there's not enough affordable units, and that continues to be a challenge for Kahila and for, and for the City of Toronto. There's just not enough affordable housing. Our challenge was Mervish Villages yet to come with 12 units. Our challenge will be how do we accept um, applicants, and we, we expect a tsunami of applications. That will be our challenge. We're some yeah. very lucky people. Yeah. Yeah, and, and listen, you know, our federal government is is very rightly welcoming more and more of five hundred thousand people into our country by twenty twenty five. And you know, these people need to live somewhere, and that's a start. You know, and you know, Canada is a, a global country. You know, and we're blessed to live amongst so many different diverse people it makes us better and to your point you know lisa we don't have enough affordable housing you know this is a start we're doing what we can we can do more and we will do more but you know the more we we actually have honest conversations with not just us but with you know our elected officials um the more we can push this narrative along raising the bar you said it nicely yeah great Sounds good. All right, so now uh, we're going to go to our boots on the ground with Brenda Eisen. So Brenda is a long-term uh, board member of Kahila. She's also principal architect of uh, Eisen Associates. I think I got Architects. that. Eisen Architects, thank you. Uh, an all-female-led architecture firm in Toronto specializing awesome. in modern home design. So over to you, Brenda.